I know you don't want to, but that's fine. We are going to cover it. UCLA 38, LSU 27. And I, this one was shocking to me. I don't know how it was to anybody else. I know there were a lot of people that were on UCLA. I get it. But the way that their their lines of scrimmage were able to dominate this football game shocked me. The biggest play in the game, as far as the, the most important plays from a numbers perspective, the Max Johnson interception that Caleb Johnson returned 34 yards to the LSU 17 was a complete uh, disaster of a play. At LSU at that point is down 14 to 10, and, and you have a real shot to take full advantage of this game, complete start the dominating process, and that one play kind of changed the tide for the entire rest of the game. Which, yeah, it flips the game. Yes, completely flips it. The other biggest plays in, in the second quarter, the 75-yard touchdown pass from DTR, again, shocked me a little bit. Max Johnson, let's see, the third one in the third quarter, the pass to uh, Butte for the 44-yard touchdown, that one got it back to 21-17. to You know, there were, there were a lot of massive plays in this game, and UCLA looks like the real deal right now. If they are able to do this to LSU... That's, see, this is what I'm trying to figure out from week one, and I know that these are overreactions, and I get that, but if UCLA can do that to LSU, does that say that UCLA could dominate in the Pac-12, or does that say that LSU is in big, big trouble for the rest of the season? How, Chris, how do you see it? So I think there's a little bit of truth to both of those statements. LSU is not as good. So listen, I thought LSU was going to win this game because I assumed LSU was bigger, LSU was stronger, and LSU was faster. At no point... In this game, was LSU bigger, stronger, or faster? They were bigger than us in the trenches. They were absolutely stronger than us, and they had a lot more speed than LSU had on the field. They it just they whipped LSU up front on, on both yeah. sides. Like, I could not believe what I was watching. If you go back and watch the game, you can see the push. And they, it, you know how you can always tell who's winning a ball game based on who is getting pushed back and, yeah. and, it was UCLA pushing LSU back almost every play. Like, yeah. I could not believe it. Go back and look at third down stats. I don't know them exactly, but I'm going to bet that they averaged more than 17 yards on third down. So LSU was doing exactly what they were supposed to do most of the times on first and second down. They were getting them behind the sticks. It, there, were, there were several third and 17, third and 15, third and 12s throughout the game. Yeah. And it did not matter. They were getting 17 to 20 yards every third down. They just picked them up and they were doing them with run plays. They were doing them with little dump screens. It, it, strong safety doesn't play strong safety. Strong is his name. Was getting dusted by some fat ass tight end that did not look athletic at all. But every time you watch the screen, 22 is 17 yards behind him. Yeah. It, it was it was weird. Third down success rate, uh, not success rate, but we'll we'll do third down efficiency. UCLA is 7 out of 13. LSU was actually 6 out of 15. But, yeah, like overall total yards, 470. But that, the biggest thing was UCLA had 210 rushing yards on 47 attempts. And in LSU had 25 attempts running the football for 49 yards. Oh, couldn't run it. So like, I knew we were in trouble coming out of halftime when – the sideline reporter say, talked up, said, what do you need to change? He said, we need to figure out how to run the ball. And my first thought was as well, we're, we're definitely screwed now because they can't run the ball. But instead of trying to do what you do when you can't run the ball, which is make your short passing game, your run game, they just force the run. But we never try to run outside. We never run off tackle. We just run up the gut. So every first down, from the entire second half on, we just forced the run. So now you become predictable. So you run on first down, you get one or two yards, or you're starting to get positive yards instead of getting tackled backwards. Yeah. But it didn't matter because it's not enough. Now you're behind the sticks on second. You're behind the sticks on third. And there's nothing you can do. You become predictable. And as soon as Ed said, we've got to find a way to run the ball, I thought, we're going to be stuck in the mud because there's no doubt. Now they're going to, instead of figuring out what you can do and what you can't do and do what you can do, they no, we want to impose our will on them. So we're going to try to impose our will on them. Well, you just tried it the whole first half. It didn't work. Did something magical happen at halftime? Because I don't think so. And so 
It is what it is. I don't think LSU is nearly as talented as we thought they were. On the other side, I do think this might be the most talented Chip Kelly team that we have seen him coach in college since the national championship Oregon team. Okay. So I, I, I really I believe wanna, I do want to jump into that because I don't I don't think it's talent. I think I think the fact that this was like the slow game, right? This was the the slow build for Chip Kelly because he now has a team full of seniors, full of guys well, yes. that have been in that program for four years. So they're not super talented, but they are incredibly developed. Well, don't go well tell coached. DTR he's not talented, okay? Oh, agreed, agreed. He's but he's he's been there for four years now. He just hasn't, you know, he hadn't looked great. We well, can't do it all by himself. Agreed. They, name Agreed. the other players around him, okay? Because you couldn't do it until this year. You couldn't do it until yesterday. I, I can't do it right now. I can't name the well, players. You should be they... able to because those guys were good. <laughs> well, I those mean, guys I know, were really I know good. Zach Charbonnet, but he's you know Michigan transfer. You got Britton Brown in. You got uh, Greg Dolkic. You I, I will tell you this: the defense for UCLA really surprising. Like they have not been this level good in a while and it, it's not it's not saying that they are good because they played like the best offense in the world last night but LSU has players they got duped and they shut them down like there were a few things that there were a few plays that you're always going to be able to get open if you've got players like uh like Butte right yeah but the majority of that game they shut that LSU offense down they shut down that running game and and push back that offensive line, and I was, I was surprised. This has been the the slow build for Chip Kelly, yeah. and it, it they look good right now. They look good, yeah. and so we do have a few questions. A Rife jumps in. He said, "You guys don't think OSU defense matches up to Wisconsin?" I will tell you this. I I thought before the season that Ohio State had the best defensive line in the country, the the most talented. They ain't there yet. So they they I think Wisconsin has a better defensive line than Ohio State right now. Not based on talent or potential based on uh, what I've seen, right? So that's that's the way I'm going with that. Ohio State don't scare me at all. You know, they right might now. roll through their schedule, but they don't scare me at all. No, there's there's flaws with, with Ohio State, big time. They, they, looked, they looked super beatable. Modest Cowboy E said, Pac-12 North, toughest division in college football this year, and then put a clown face. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they've looked good in one week. I'll say that. So, you know, that's, that's all we know uh, right now, but I doubt hang it. Hang on, Pac-12 North looked good? So the second best team, some people had the best team. Oh no, no, no! Losing to Montana. No, no, no! I was thinking Pac-12 South. I'm sorry, Washington, yeah, Oregon, all those that, looked terrible. Washington looked State, terrible. all those guys. Everybody looked awful. No, he was making a yes. joke, and he's right. Yes, he's They're right. One They're one of the worst terrible. divisions in football. The uh, the Alliance could probably do away with about three divisions and and be better. I, I think. Oh yeah. Uh, Paul Riggs said, "Does Florida State have a chance tonight?" Yeah, of course they got a chance tonight. Like we don't think they're going to cover, but they absolutely have a chance. You never know. You, you line them up. You see what happens. Paul Riggs said they're a team. Don't know what that means. And Ben said the Rose Bowl was still one fourth empty. Well, yeah, it's Los Angeles. There's a lot of stuff to do in Los Angeles. And hey, I will tell well, you. Well, there's just not a lot of people that care about college football in Los Angeles. That's the biggest thing. Yes, a hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's not that there's just too much stuff to do. It's also a lot of people live there and don't because care. they don't care about the because they don't care about football. And there were there were twenty thousand people there in in uh, gold and yellow. Like our gold and purple. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.